Oh, Jesus, you are indeed our God. You are indeed seated on a throne, and uh, we adore you. We adore you this morning. We adore you because of who you are, what you have done to reconcile sinful man to your Father. Father, I pray that you would help us during this time. You would give us eyes to see your word, ears to hear your word, a mind to understand it, Uh, that we might proclaim and we might understand your son and worship him. And I pray it in his name. Amen. Well, this is the point in our service where we take some time to remember Jesus. We take some time to remember who he is and what he did at the cross for all of those who have trusted in him. In a few minutes, we're going to take a small wafer and a bit of juice. These are symbols. They're symbols of the body of Christ and the blood of Christ, which were offered up for those who would trust in him. And it's really important during this time that we remember Christ rightly. Uh, So to do that, we're going to be taking a look at Christ's obedience and Christ's perfection. And for that, we'll be looking at Hebrews chapter 5. We'll be looking at verses 8 and 9. So if you have your Bibles, turn there with me. Uh, And if you don't have a Bible, just raise your hand. There should be some men coming down the aisles, and they will put a Bible in your hand. If you don't actually own a Bible, We would love for you to take this as your own so you can begin reading God's word for yourself. Hebrews chapter 5 starts with a discussion of the Old Testament Jewish priest. And the Old Testament Jewish priest was appointed by God as one who would represent the people of Israel before him. And they would do this by offering sacrifices. But the author then moves very quickly to the person of Jesus and points out that Jesus was also a priest. But his role was distinct from the Old Testament priest in a number of ways, one of which was that his role was a permanent role. But in our passage here in verses 8 and 9, we're going to be looking at a couple of other things about Jesus. We're going to note his obedience, and we're going to note his perfection. So let's read verses 8 and 9 together and look for those things. Although he was a son, he learned obedience from the things which he suffered, and having been made perfect... He became to all those who obey him the source of eternal salvation. So we see the idea of obedience there beginning in verse 8. Jesus learned obedience. It's important for us to understand here that Jesus learned his obedience. But this doesn't suggest there was some deficiency in Jesus. There was something that he was lacking in his character. Instead, what this is pointing at, what's in view here, is the gaining of an experience And that experience was the experience of suffering the Father's wrath in place of all of those who would trust in Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Before the cross, there was only one experience that Jesus had and with the Father, and that was one of love and unity, perfect love and perfect unity. But when Jesus went to the cross, he bore in his own body the sins of all of those who put their trust in him. And because he bore that sin in his body, He became liable for that sin. He became responsible for it. He had to give an answer for that. And specifically, he had to absorb in his own body the Father's wrath against that sin. It's good for us to just give some thought to that for a minute. We we contemplate that every week, but sometimes it's really good to just put some perspective on that. Uh, Jesus' crucifixion was a very public event. It was a public event, and he was probably crucified naked. So there was shame that went along with this. And there was mocking and scorning and jeering at him by several groups of people, by religious leaders, by passers-by, even by those who were crucified alongside him. And then there was the pain of the crucifixion itself, uh, nails being driven through his hands and his feet, um, incredible pressure in his chest that made breathing and circulation become difficult, loss of blood, the failure of his nervous system. A crown of thorns had been pressed into his skull and He was beaten over the head with a reed after that crown was put on his head. So Jesus was in a great deal of pain. It's a very humiliating event, but none of that begins to compare with the wrath that Jesus absorbed in his own body from an infinitely holy, infinitely powerful, infinitely offended God. And Jesus obediently entrusted himself to the Father as he waited for every bit of the Father's wrath to be poured out on him. He was so committed to obeying the Father's design for salvation that he was willing to endure on that cross what all of believers should deserve, and they do deserve to experience forever in a lake of fire. 
And all of that is because of Jesus' obedience to the Father. So that gives the, the believer a great occasion for joy, an occasion to delight and worship and magnify Christ because of that. But the author also speaks in verse 9 of Jesus' perfection. We read that Jesus was made perfect. And again, this doesn't suggest that there's anything lacking in Jesus. It's not as if there was any mar in Jesus' character that needed to be corrected. But what this is speaking to is the fulfilling of Jesus' earthly ministry. Jesus accomplished the purpose for which he was sent here by the Father. He became what the Father intended for him to be at the end of the cross. That is the source of salvation for everybody who would trust in him. And so Jesus is the source of our salvation because only in Jesus do we find the righteousness that we need to be in a right relationship with God. That righteousness is conferred onto those who put their trust in Christ for who he is and what he did in their place. So if you're here today and that's you, if you put your faith and your trust and your confidence in Christ, if you recognize him as your Lord and your Savior and your Master, would you join together in taking communion with us? Now, as the elements come to you, take them and hold them and ponder the obedience of Christ, that he would patiently endure the Father's wrath that should have been directed to you so that you can be reconciled to God and you can spend forever and eternity with him. And then when your heart is prepared, take the elements on your own. If you're here today and you are not a follower of Christ, we want you to know this. We are delighted. We are very thankful. We're very glad that you're here with us. I want to point your attention to verse 9 again. Notice that Jesus is the source of salvation, but he's the source of salvation to a specific group of people. That group of people is to all of those who will obey him. The ones who consider Jesus to be their master and their Lord. And what that means in English, what that means in layman's terms for us is whose lordship do we submit to? Do we submit to our own or do we submit to the lordship of Jesus Christ? Especially as it relates to how we think, how we speak, how we act what our affections really are. Christ is the source of salvation for everybody who, as it relates to those things, they consistently submit to Christ. So if that's not you today, just take the elements when they come to you and pass them to the person next to you. But use this as an opportunity to consider your position before Christ and before God, a holy God who has wrath against you because of the offense that your sin is to him. But know that today could be the day of salvation for you if you acknowledge Christ as your Lord and Savior and him as the only one who will give you the righteousness that you need to be in a right relationship with God. Uh, there will be someone here to my right, to your left, uh, after the service, if you would love to meet with them. I will be up at the information booth in the front, by the front of the church, or speak with the person who's sitting next to you. They would love to talk to you about what it looks like to be in a right relationship with God by trusting in Christ. So men come and serve us, and when uh, we've all had time to take, I'll come back and close our time in prayer.